never been the same after its reported brush with the unknown. Our Rick DeReyes is here now to tell us about the Kelly incident. That's right. We're talking about Kelly, Kentucky. It's a little town about eight miles north of Hopkinsville, Kentucky, about an hour's drive north of Nashville. Almost 30 years ago, 38 years ago, it was reluctantly pushed into the spotlight when it got a visit from something that seemed unearthly. Of all of the little out-of-the-way places in this whole world, it just had to happen in Kelly, Kentucky. I guess I just picked that one certain spot to land there and I guess to see what was going on, I don't know. If you had the technology to transfer from galaxy to galaxy, who the hell would want to pick Kelly, Kentucky? I'd go to Washington, D.C. I don't know about you. <laughs> It's just a siding on what used to be the old l &N Railroad. About a hundred and some people, as locals say, with not a lot of change in the past 38 years. That's when the last world-shaking event happened here, one that changed Kelly and nearby Hopkinsville forever. It happened on a little hilltop just off the old Madisonville Road. A trailer now sits in the backyard of what used to be the old Sutton and Lankford place. August 21st of 1955 turned out to be a hot and sultry summer night here in Kelly, the kind of night that makes people here in western Kentucky seem a little bit restless. It was at this well around twilight that Billy Ray Taylor, a visitor to the family, came out to draw some water when he thought he saw something glide into the trees out back. It was into this thicket that Taylor said he saw a large glowing object land. It was hissing, he said, and trailing the colors of the rainbow. Today, a view of the property with a night scope looks very much like it did that night around 8 p.m. A dog's bark alerted the family to something outside. What they saw terrified them. Lonnie Langford was there that night. He was 12. Now, for the first time ever publicly, he recounts what happened. All I seen was uh, just what they looked like. Uh, web feet, web hands, pointed ears, and uh, big round eyes. And they was about three foot tall. And uh, they had silver uniforms on. First of all, my mother's uh, first one that seen them. Uh, she uh, was looking through the window, uh, you know, window glass, and one come up at the window. And my mother hollered. So my half brother, he came in there with a double barrel shotgun and uh, shot him. But it took it just just knocked him down. Saw it done. He got up. And that was it. Uh, didn't, didn't hurt him, didn't faze him a bit. Another creature on the roof grabbed at the hair of Lonnie's half-brother. He fired, but to no effect. After several more hours of gunfire, the family loaded two cars and sped to the police station in nearby Hopkinsville. Russell Greenwell was the police chief then. His widow, Rachel Greenwell, was with him that night. Uh, the tension was just thick. Uh, everybody was actually doing their own thing, just... Uh, talking excitedly and uh, telling their stories of that they needed help and somebody needed to go out there. Russell Ferguson was also called out that night. He was a state trooper then and skeptical of space creatures and their equipment. So when I, when I went out and went on service, uh, I told him that I was blasting off from Hopkinsville and I talked to him on the inner roster. I was taking all of this with about a bucket of salt he did find where someone had shot through the screen. He says he and the other officers, even military police, were a little too jumpy. There was a lot of people. One of them was armed with a submachine gun. And somebody had done something to make a noise out there, and that man swung around across the crowd with his submachine gun, and we all hit the dirt. I wasn't a 12, so I just felt, just felt scared, you know, really. Uh, but the ordeal wasn't over yet. Find out what happened tomorrow night. Now, even through all the commotion, the families were never harmed, and they say that the creatures never even made a threatening gesture toward them. All they did was look extremely creepy. Now, but in light of what was to come, that would turn out to be about the least of their worries. We'll talk about that tomorrow night at 11. Wow. Real quickly, do you believe it? The look in the guy's eye, and Lonnie Langford's eye, yes, I believe it. Okay. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. Part two tomorrow. Thanks a lot, Rick. That is it for a town that also had its brush with the unknown, and it hasn't gotten over it yet. Rick DeReyes is here tonight to conclude his special report on the Kelly incident. We are talking about the town of Kelly, Kentucky, and it was never the same after August 21st, 1955, the day the Sutton and Langford families claimed that they got a visit 
from creatures unknown. Now, contrary to some published reports, the creatures never did come back that night, but it wouldn't be the end of the family's problems. Uh, we was all pretty shook up. Mm -hmm. If I remember right, we uh, left and went to some friend's house for the night. It was about the best thing Lonnie Langford and his family could have done. They'd spent the night of August 21st firing shot after shot at what they described as three-foot-tall creatures with pointed ears, long arms, and talons. Today, he says his family has spent the past 38 years trying to live it down. I can't explain it. This just don't make me feel, uh, feel right, you know, because uh, I don't think they uh, believe us or, you know, stuff like that. The story made the papers so many times it was later mislabeled as the Kelly Green Men. That's how people in Kelly and nearby Hopkinsville know it now. Its popularity is something historian William Turner has spent years trying to figure out. This community has developed a consciousness about, quote, the little green men of Kelly that not only puts us on the map and gives us an opportunity for conversation, but also, well, I'll put it this way. It adds to the luster and specter of life. But it hasn't that's turned that's everyone into believers. Life. They like to talk about it, but uh, if you ask Penn one down that believes it, I don't believe that you'd get a very affirmative uh, uh, answer about it. Part of the problem is evidence. Russell Ferguson was a state trooper on the scene that night. We examined the fields very carefully. I found nothing, absolutely nothing, not even cow dung. There wasn't anything in that field except grass. But there was always something that bothered Chief Greenwell as he was standing out here in the dark in the middle of the night trying to make sense of all this space alien talk. He said he never found a drop of liquor on the property. And he told his widow that to his dying day, he would never forget the look in Granny Langford's eyes. She told him the story. He said he didn't know what had happened, but he felt like that she really felt like she had seen something that she was terrorized. I know they saw something because they loved their place to live. And they couldn't say that afterwards because they were scared to death. So, in a state where there are markers for just about every notable occurrence, oddly enough, there's not a one except for a trailer to mark the little green men of Kelly. It's now 38 years later, no one still knows what scared those families, and the debate goes on. We were just reminiscing in the makeup room earlier today about the story in New, New Mexico. Yeah. Where there were Roswell. some kind of uh, where, alien yeah, visitation. Yeah, where, where one crashed outside Roswell, New Mexico, and right. the uh, Air Force allegedly picked up all the fragments from the little occupants right. and stole them off. Took to them away. Uh, yeah. Hangar 18 or whatever that was. I thought when you were talking about little green creatures, you were talking about my kids. I'm glad <laughs> I got the whole story out of you.